Hey everybody, it's Joel Howe, and this is one, uh, part one of a three-part tutorial. I'm going to try to do a 3D text logo animation tutorial here. And so the first part is going to be basically a storyboard or a sketch of the concept that we're going to do. Uh, the second part is going to be the 3D text animation in 3ds Max. And then the third part will be bringing everything into Photoshop for uh, for the final treatment and particles and things like that. So this first uh, this first tutorial, uh, again, I try to shoot to have everything under 10 minutes, but uh, this first tutorial should be more more of a two two point perspective sketching tutorial than anything else. But uh, uh, just wanted so if you're if you're familiar with that, feel free to move ahead. But uh, for right now. Uh, what I'd like to do is just get started. So we're gonna do we're gonna create some 3D text, and I'm gonna use a, a 3D uh, two point perspective to do that. And in Photoshop, uh, what I want to do is basically just just define my two points, my vanishing points. So I'm gonna use the zoom key, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the line tool, and uh, make sure that's set to path. And what that's going to do is give me some nice, um, uh, some nice uh, lines to work with that aren't going to render as pixels. And uh, so I've created my horizon line, and I'm going to go to one side and draw from that end over. And I just have to get close, and I'll draw it from that end over here. This is going to be the front of the text where the where the the letters faces will appear. And then uh, I'll draw these over to this side, and that's going to be uh, the, this will be in the direction of the um, the extrusion of the text, or where the where the text will push in push back into the scene. So uh, these two uh, intersect points are my vanishing points, and so let me get started just with drawing some faces, uh, the letter faces onto the uh, onto the perspective lines I have here. Uh, so I'll zoom in, and um, actually, you know what? I'm going to add one, uh, add two more lines here because I, I'm going to use just the word text, and uh, I'm going to just rough these in here, and you'll see why in a second. So at this point, I'll zoom in, and if you think of, <clears throat> I think of the old. Uh, the old handwriting paper where uh, I'm going to use the brush tool. I'm on a new layer, and uh, I think of the old handwriting paper here where uh, uh, we've got lines and we can draw within. So I'm going to draw the word text in here, and, and uh, let me just rough it in really quick. And um, I'm going to have to work faster than that if we're uh, if we're going to get this done in ten minutes. So. So I want to use these perspective lines to help me uh, label in this text. And so just by freehanding it here, you can see that I'm actually doing okay in terms of getting getting kind of close. I want to I want to for the X I want these lines to 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 be continuous and 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 uh, so I'll, so that looks fine in terms of the rough placement of the of the letters. So now I'll go back and make it a little bit more refined. So uh, with the uh, with the uh, brush tool, uh, you can draw your own straight vertical lines, or you can hold the shift key down, and Photoshop will draw those for you. So you can have perfectly straight lines, which is which is kind of nice. Um, and uh, so I can do that here, and we can just draw in the uh, to match those perspective lines. So these are basically front. Uh, flat lines, horizontal and vertical lines. And for the two-point perspective, uh, the vertical lines stay vertical, and the horizontal lines uh, match the uh, perspective lines all pointing back to the vanishing point. So I'll hold the shift key down, draw a nice uh, straight vertical line there. Uh, if you don't release the shift key, you get that little connection. Photoshop tries to connect it to the previous one. So there's one letter T. Uh, and I'll go try to go a little quicker here and maybe talk a little bit less. But uh, I'm just going to erase those out. I just use those to kind of rough in the overall location of letters. And there. 
So now I can just draw along that line, draw along that line. I might, uh, and I'll draw up there. And so having these perspective lines in here really helps to just rough in the letters quickly, quickly and easily. And, oops. Yes, yes, yes. I hit the close stamp button. That's roughly close. Okay. And so I keep moving along. And I want to stay on those perspective lines. And I'm hopping over to the race here. Uh, when I basically I'm working just with the B and the E hotkeys. So if I if I uh, if I look at uh, I, I want to brush, I use the uh, the B key, and then if I want to erase, I use the E key. So there's an erase. So that um, kind of quickly gets me back and forth between the two. And I think we're going to draw there. And again, these lines that I roughed in are, are perspective lines. Um, so, so uh, I'm sorry, they're paths. So they, uh, they stick around and they're not connected to the pixels you're actually working with on the layers, which is kind of nice. All right. And that could be better, but for now it'll have to do. Uh, that looks like it should be thicker, but. And so again, vertical line. And just using the B. You don't need any of that. These T's are actually very easy to, to draw out because they're just straight lines. And I'll just trace that there, and trace that there, and trace that there, and trace that there. And so if I uh, zoom that out a little bit now, Ooh, with the alt key. We've got text roughed in. I don't like the look of that X, so I might take a minute and clean that up. Hey, okay. So we've got our, so we've got the front letters already defined for one vanishing point. And now we have to represent the depth of the text with this second vanishing point. So what I'll do is, I'm actually going to go in and I'll use the line tool again. And I want to, uh, let's see, I might have to zoom out to see that vanishing point. Um, I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to start with any corner of the letters. Like there's a corner of the T here. And I'm going to draw that back to the vanishing point. And uh, so here's a T. Draw that back. Uh, here's, the let, here's the center of the X. That's a corner. This is a corner. So these are all lines of perspective that I'm drawing that will uh, all point back to that vanishing point. It's going to give us accurate perspective. And uh, uh, that's going to start to get pretty noisy back there. But you'll get the idea. And... So there we go. So we have a fair amount of lines of perspective. So now I can zoom in and I'm going to call layer two the drawing layer. And we're going to go back to using the brush tool. And just to, uh, I'm going to extrude this edge back. I'll just draw a vertical line back here and just trace on that vanishing uh, line of perspective back to the vanishing point and that works. So this is basically going to be the length of our extrusion and um, this length I could make that consistent throughout the uh, uh, it's going to be a little smaller as we go. I think I'm just going to eyeball this but you could use a you could create a guide in Photoshop and and uh, and uh, create that but I'm just going to eyeball it for now just to save a little time. And that's going to follow the perspective lines and it's fairly easy to draw these because you've you've got similar lines of perspective there. I'm going to zoom in 
And I like to use the E key to erase if I don't like something. And then I use the B key to get back to my brush. Then I can follow that and try to connect that. And uh, so that works. Uh, the X, we're going to trace back. We're going to trace back. Gonna trace that down and up. Again, this isn't final art, so we don't have to be too, too precise. It's going to head back that way. I didn't make lines for these using the guides. If I could have, it might even be faster. I could also use the line tool to do this kind of thing. But I'm basically just trying to approximate heading back to the vanishing point with each one, and it, work, and it makes it very easy when I actually have a line there to work with. And that's going to taper a little bit. And uh, let's say there. And uh, that's going to taper back. Maybe I'll draw the vertical there. There's a corner out there somewhere. And that edge would be vertical. But this line comes back towards the vanishing point and then it heads out that way. And this line, oops. No shift key needed there. We're following the perspective line. We're following this perspective line, but we lose it behind the E. That's the two angled. That's a little too angled too. And let's say I'll just do that up. And again, I'm eyeballing this depth. You could make another layer that was uh, that had kind of a, a set distance to use as a guide, make it transparent over the top, that kind of thing. Um, but this is, that line's pretty far off, so we'll straighten that out. All right, so that's, uh, that's okay. So at this point, we have the text, and uh, it's shaded here. And uh, so I should be able to go in and I can choose these guides and I can just delete those. I don't need those anymore. And I've got my, um, my text here and you could start to shade that in. But this is a basic uh, um, two point perspective of text that I wanna show. I can fill this in pretty quickly. If I use the, uh, let's see, if I use the magic, uh, magic wand tool, and um, and I just choose basically the, uh, let's see, we'll do tolerance of uh, 50. And I just select the fronts of the letters. And if I just choose a grayscale value, kind of middle of the road grayscale value here. And uh, we'll use the paint bucket tool. I'll turn off the contiguous option so I can just fill one and all, all the selection gets filled. Uh, I can do the same thing for the sides. Hold shift key and kind of select this area. If I'm really smart, maybe I'll even uh, uh, select, modify, expand, and expand that by a pixel or two. And this is, the light's gonna be coming from the right, so we'll make that a little bit lighter. And we use the paint bucket tool and we'll fill those again. So that gets me a little better fill. Uh, I could also do that. Uh, I missed the, uh, this back wall, oh, back walls of the E here. So, so uh, again, nice thing to do. Modify, expand, expand that selection. And now you can use the uh, paint bucket tool and fill those in. And just to finish this up, we'll grab the, areas that should be in shadow. Try to do this without zooming in. Select. And then just choose a slightly darker shade. And we'll fill those in. Uh, and there you go. And so there, and then uh, this, this E is really the only, this is the only top surface we see. So we could leave that as is or, or shade it in. So at this point, um, I think we're, the, the plan in terms of this, 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 uh, this text animation 
you know, we've basically done this drawing to to create a placeholder for the for the logo um, to sell it. Honestly, it's faster to extrude it in three D and just get. Uh, but uh, but this was a hopefully a helpful tutorial for somebody who's struggling with two point perspective. At this point, I think what we'll do is I'll probably end up slicing the text or or, or basically uh, having the text kind of appear out of nowhere. Um, almost like if uh, picture there was a, a surface of water and uh, we couldn't see the water, but all of a sudden as the text came out of it, uh, we could see it. So so this will appear from nowhere. Uh, and then in terms of the effect, I thought uh, I thought let me make a new layer here. I thought if uh, if we had particles that were kind of shooting out. From a planar air region right under the text as it appeared, I thought that would be pretty cool. And I don't know what those particles would look like yet, but uh, some kind of uh, energy or or something that just shows direction. Uh, I'm thinking like welding sparks or something like that. But uh, but we'll have we'll basically be able to incorporate a particle system into this. Have text appear from nowhere, and uh, and we'll be in good shape. So this is a this is a rough. Um, this is the this so this is a, this is a wrap in terms of the 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 two uh, D or the storyboarding portion. Uh, any, a couple of summary points that uh, this image size uh, I typically draw uh, in sixteen by nine aspect ratio. So make sure that you do that uh, because most of your video is gonna. B 16 by nine, or always draw in the aspect ratio of your final production. And uh, what I would do now is probably save out a PNG of this and incorporate it into uh, a storyboard template uh, with three, four, four, uh, four frames or more per page. So at that point, uh, you could tell your whole story of your whole animation, and this is just one shot uh, of the. Uh, this and and honestly, for 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 any kind of action, you'd probably want to show motion lines as well. Uh, so we'd want to show this movement is coming up, and you know, we'd uh, um, maybe even cut out some of the text here, but we don't have time for that. So look for the next phase of this tutorial is we'll actually be working with 3ds Max. And, uh, and after that, we'll bring everything into After Effects. But uh, thanks for watching, and uh, leave a comment. Let me know if this was helpful for you. Thanks.